Good morning to you all. And uh, this is my first chapel for the year 2023. So I want to start by saying Happy New Year. Uh, the last two weeks, Dr. Lee was sharing the Word of God. And the title, the first day's title was Repentance. And as I was sitting back there, I heard an announcement that I will be the speaker for the third chapel. And I was thinking what to share as he was preaching here. And I decided to preach about one theme. And I was thinking about that and preparing and meditating on it. And then the second day, Dr. Lee came and he exactly said he's going to preach about the theme that I was planning to prepare. What was it? Turning point. Then I had to change again. But it's a new year, uh, January. So I thought, OK, I didn't change my sermon. I just changed the, the title. <laughs> Please, all of, you, all of you, read the title. One, two, three, fresh start. Anything fresh sounds good. Fruit, food, and even when we feel refreshed. The year 2023, uh, but maybe let me start by asking you a question. Where did the year 2022 go? Where did it go? Or maybe, how did it go? Probably the second question is a proper question to ask. How did it go? Like a roller coaster? Like a turtle? Are there some resolutions that you didn't complete, procrastinated for the year 2023? Have you completed, accomplished all your plans that you were anticipating to uh, accomplish in the year 2022? How did it go? In some cultures, the expression of time, the motion of time, differs from culture to culture. Without counting uh, biblical languages like Hebrew and Greek, I speak about five different languages without counting Korean, because my Korean is not really good. And in different cultures, there are different expressions of the motion of time. How do you say in Korea, in Korean language? Does time walk or goes or run? In some culture, time goes or walks. Say, for example, in my native language, we say time walks. I don't know how it walks. Maybe like a turtle or like a people or like some animals moving. I don't know. In some cultures, people say a bit faster. They say time runs. Maybe like a rabbit or some like fast animals like cheetah. In some language, including English, we also use an expression that says, time flies. <laughs> Depending on the culture that you belong to and the language that you speak, and also depending on the current location that you occupy in the human development process, you may use the word time goes or time walks or time flies. Whatever expressions of motion you use for time, we can agree on time moves forward. Recently, I was reading an article on the Korean Herald, and the same article was also posted on Korean Times. And the title is Changes to Come in 2023. The Korean Times title says, what to expect in 2023. And the article mentions some about, some, uh, about eight different changes to come in the year 2023 in Korea. I brought four of them here. Number one, the minimum wage is about to increase in the year 2023. And that's a good news for uh, blue collar workers, laborers, because they're going to receive what they deserve for the work they are uh, contributing to the community and the country. And then the second one is use by date instead of sale by date. This is about the expiration of uh, food items that we buy in stores. Recently, Korea was using sale by date, but now they are going to change 
use by date expiration. And the third one is university admission fees to be abolished. When you apply to universities, some of the universities ask people to pay for admission fee about 1 million Korean won, which is about close to $1,000, which is a huge money. And you may not be even accepted, but anyway, you have to pay. Good news, especially for high school students. I know most of you are uh, planning to go to the States. You are applying there. Uh, it works only in Korea, but still it's a good news. And the last one here is very much interesting. Guess what? Korea is adopting the global standard of age counting. When I first came to Korea with my wife, overnight we became two years old. You know why? Uh, in my family, we are four. Three of us, we celebrate Christmas in December. Brooke is 14, I'm 24, my wife is 27, and then my uh, uh, second son, Israel, he only uh, celebrates his uh, uh, birthday in January 2nd. So most of us in December. So that means we became older two years, right? But now, thanks to the, the Korean government, they are changing this uh, age counting, and now again, we are going to become what? Young, by two years. Some of you, it's, it's very much interesting. I never thought of the reverse motion of time. Usually, we all know that time moves forward, but now for, uh, I think this is going to start in June 2023, by one or two years, you are going to be young. Have you ever thought moving backward in the motion of time? I was just imagining like two years or three years, if we go backward in, in, uh, in time, what some of our students look like. And I brought some pictures just for a reminder. Okay, get ready here to see some picture. Hmm, our own Joseph when he was young. Very cute, right? This is maybe two years or uh, three years moving backward in motion. <laughs> okay, who's next? By the way, this is just random picture, don't worry. Who is coming next? Let's see. Okay, here is Grace. <laughs> and uh, some of the students are hiding. <laughs> okay, our own Brooke here. This is, I think, the, time, the day you did, you did some speech, okay? Oh, yes, sir. And Sean, big change. <laughs> okay. Here you go, Lois. And <laughs> Julie, last one, Ida. It's very interesting. And I was thinking, like, okay, how about we imagine not only thinking backward, the reverse motion, how about we think the forward? Now, just out of curiosity, I just put my picture, not your picture, my picture in one online aging app, right? And I just first, I wanted, to, I don't want to see the older version of Peter, and I put, and then I moved it back. And then for your surprise, the picture it brought is exactly the same with my picture when I was young. I was like, wow, this is magical, amazing. And then I moved it forward. I am 42, uh, 43 Korean, uh, Korean age, but thanks to Korean government now, I'm, I'm going to be 41, right? That's good. I, I moved it when I was in my 50. What will I look like? This picture came. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> but not bad, it's okay. And then like I intensified my curiosity and I moved it forward and then I say, how about when I am in my 70s? Like middle of 70s, senior citizen. Do you want to see that? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't, I don't want to show that. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Wow. <laughs> the older version of uh, Peter. Not bad. <laughs> I just want to live, God willing, healthy and happy, man. It doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter, right? Anyway, time moves forward. Life is always in a motion. Everything is moving. Whether you like it or not, things are moving. Everything is in motion. Thus, change, transformation, 
is inevitable. We need to accept that. Whether it is visible or invisible, almost everything is moving. Um, some of the movements are invisible. We cannot see with our naked eyes. But almost everything is moving. Now here, the entire universe is in a motion and in a movement, as you know. Our Milky Way galaxy uh, is in a motion, always is in a movement in space. I'm not a science teacher, but I heard, I read it in textbook, and I believed we are in a motion. If, we, if it stop, life will stop. And our planet Earth. And then history is also moving forward. I know there are different theories about history. Some people say history is moving in a vicious cycle. Some people say, no, it's moving linear forward. Whatever the motion is, uh, we all agree that history is moving in a movement. Time, as I've already told you, and the life generally is moving. There is one a very famous German psychological theorist called Eric Erikson. Most of you who studied education or psychology, you know him. He is especially well known for his eight psychological human development stages. He divides the human development in aged, eight stages. And as you can see here, infant, toddler, uh, preschooler from three years to five years, and then uh, grade schoolers, teenagers, young adult, middle aged adult, and senior citizens. And um, he used the word uh, older adult, but nowadays instead of calling people old, it's, it's better to call them senior citizens, which is respectful. And, and if you call me like old man, I, don't, I may not feel <laughs> okay, right? But if you call me like, oh, a senior citizen, that's more respectful, right? Anyway, you see here, let me show you in a picture. These are the pictures, you see? Uh, when I uh, think of um, the JCS community here, teachers, faculty members, and students, I think most of us are uh, in between uh, the second picture and one, two, three, four, five, probably somewhere the fifth picture. When I was thinking like some of the teachers are in um, the fifth stage, middle-aged adult, I was almost about to come back and visit the young adult stage. But it's just for one year that I couldn't go back. But it's okay. I remain in the middle age adulthood. That's okay. Every stage in life comes with an opportunity for all, for all of us to fresh start. At every stage, any stage, whether you are young, or you are in a middle age or a senior citizen, it doesn't matter. Every stage in our life, it comes with an opportunity for us to start life all over again. That's what Dr. Lee was telling us last, last week, if you remember. What? Turning point, okay? It's a fresh start. You make a decision, you'll have a determination to start life over again, not resenting what is past, regretting about the past, the past but the opportunity is coming all the time. In English, there is a word that we use especially on a special occasions, like a graduation, a milestone. This is a great milestone that you accomplished today, but it's not the end of everything, but it's the beginning of a new chapter. That's a speech that we hear on graduation, right? Which, which is true. In English, there are two different meanings when we say a milestone. What is the purpose and the meaning of a milestone here? The first one is when we say a milestone, a stone set up beside a road with the purpose of reminding you you are on the right direction to your destination. Especially if you do not know the road, you rely on this milestone to see whether you are on the right direction or not, and also to know the distance how far have you traveled from your start point? And how many miles left for you to reach your destination? This is the literal meaning of a milestone. Then there is another meaning. This one is, it refers to an action or events that mark a significant change or stage or development in your life. This expression is also found in the Bible. Once God told to, told to Joshua, 
to erect a memorial stone to remind the people of the Israelites to remember what God has done in their life. As you all know, the Israelites have been wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, as, as you know, after they left Egypt and heading to the, the land of the covenant. They wandered for 40 years. If you travel to Egypt and uh, uh, Sinai wilderness, you will see it, the wilderness is not that too big to wander for 40 years. There was something wrong with the Israelites. How comes a person wanders for 40 years? You can imagine their number. When they left Egypt, there were uh, 600,000 people without counting children and women. That means uh, in theology we say we estimate about 3 million people left. 3 million people wandering for 40 years in one wilderness. That is hard to imagine. The problem is whenever they are traveling, they were not able to put a milestone so that they may remember their past, so that they may remember the destination. It was a kind of a vicious cycle, wandering, nobody, no one from them says seven years ago or three years ago we passed on the same way because they don't have a milestone. Sometimes life happens like that, wandering, doing the same thing, repeating the same mistake, and there's no progress. That's why we need fresh start. That's why we need to erect a milestone so that we, we know our direction, we know how far we go, we know how much left for us, Thus, we give value for the time in our life. Now here, shall we read it all together? If you can see, one, two, three. Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribe of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do this stone mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the water of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Amen. You see, now this is the first time the Israelites are erecting a memorial stone after they cross with the purpose of narrating the story to the next generation. Last week, Dr. P, um, uh, Dr. Lee, when he was sharing his story, I was very much amazed for two things. Number one, the turning point in his life was amazing. It's a great story to hear. It inspires all of us. And the second thing I was very surprised was because it seems like he had that milestone reminding him in his mind when he was narrating the story. I saw one picture, and the picture he said it was when he was in his 30s, but the narration, the storytelling was so powerful as something happened just yesterday. We need to remember the accomplishment in our life, and the fresh start helps us where we started where we are heading to. That's why we need something that triggers our memory, the work of God. God said, erect. What is the purpose of this stone? It is a memorial stone to remind you and also to narrate the story to your next generation, to the children. Taking a sign of fresh start is very much wise. Now, I have some suggestions here. We celebrate birthdays. I know in Korea, uh, Begil, the 100 days birthday is big. Uh, in old, uh, old time, uh, infant mortality rate was very high. Therefore, there is an assumption that if a child makes it to 100 day, the chance for him or her to survive is high. Then they celebrate. It's a big feast, right? Begil. And I think in some culture, um, including North America, 15th year birthday is a big celebration. Graduation. Anniversaries, conversion experiences, like uh, we heard uh, the conversion of Paul last week, and uh, New Year. There are different events that we can take as an opportunity to make a milestone, a fresh start. Transform transformation needs to be vivid. We need to make our transformation vivid, visible. In Korea, sometimes I see um, uh, 
Korea is well known in the world in a plastic surgery. A lot of people come here to do that cosmetic plastic surgery, right? Sometimes I struggle, you know, they post um, a poster everywhere and it says before and after. That could be my stupidity, but when I look to the, the poster, I have a hard time to see the difference. It says before and after, and they, they spend a lot of thousands and thousands of dollars, and I look at it and I say, before and after. What's the difference? It's the same. I, I close my eyes and see, I don't, and sometimes we say I'm changed. 2023, I have a plan, resolutions, and I'm not going to repeat the same thing that I have been doing. There are some things that I need to transform, and then 2023 comes, and it becomes so hard to see the difference between 2023 and 2022. Transformation needs to be vivid. Our commitments, our determinations, our spirituality, our change needs to be vivid in the society that we belong to. Family members, the society that we belong to, including God, needs to see the transformation that's happening in our life in a vivid way. What do we learn? Number one, let's read it together. One, two, three. Recognize movements. I told you, everything is in a motion. Our life is moving. Whether you, you imagine as a roller coaster, as a jet, or as a, a turtle, it doesn't matter, but it's in a movement. We need to discern the motion of our life. Second, one, two, three. Proactively control directions. Okay, if we are in a movement, if our life is in a motion always, then we need to proactively control the directions of the movement. If not, believe me, somebody else will control and take us to the destination that we do not want to. We need to be active controller of the movement of our life. Since we are Christians, we have the manual to direct our life, and the Spirit of God is living in us, we are to be the drivers of our life. And third one, one, two, three, identify subjects of change. Now you see, everything is in a motion. We are controlling the motion or the movement of our life. Then we need to identify subjects of change. We need to be a careful observer as a, a good driver of our life. And then we decide changes. You know, when there is a car race, there is a, a checkpoint. At certain distance, they stop and check the car, the vehicle. Otherwise, they will not finish the race. That's why we need to identify what are some of the subjects of change in my life, in the year 2003, in my future. Are there some areas of change that I have to make? We need to have that determination to make. And for that, we need to carefully observe, take our kitty time, meditation, and evaluate our own life based on the Word of God. And number four, one, two, three, imagine possible. This is being prophetic. Before you reach, you will imagine what will be your destination if you follow certain direction, certain path with this speed. When I will reach where? We need to imagine so that we will not be surprised when we reach to our destination. Because the way itself has the power to indicate what will be our destination. Be prophetic in your life. Everybody needs to proactively think and imagine what will be our destination in five, ten years. And the last one. One, two, three. Envision godliness. In the whole course of the motion, in the desire to transform, with all the determinations, commitments we have, we need to be spiritual people. Spirituality is a human dimension. As I have eyes, ears, brain, heart, that's a human dimension, human faculty. And spirituality is not a choice. When God created us, spirituality is given as a human dimension. Even people taught as non-spiritual, quote unquote, they are spiritual. The only difference is the direction, the subject of their spirituality is different than Christianity. Therefore, we need to envision godliness. In, in few years, as we are progressing in character building and personality building, we need to have that envision or vision of becoming 
like Christ our Savior. Today, it's a chance for all of us to have fresh start. I am 43, soon to be 41. I still have the chance to erect that memorial stone to start life fresh and new. Amen. Let us pray.